Okay, so hot on the heels of the DeepSeek R1, which came out last week, and seems to have had a massive impact, not only on the sort of AI slash ML community, but also on the mainstream community with a lot of stocks taking a dive, just looking at the DeepSeek R1 model. But what I want to cover today is DeepSeek's new multimodal understanding and generation model. I'm going to show you what it can do, talk a little bit about it, but also I'm going to talk about how this also just shows that they're perhaps thinking about different ideas than a lot of the mainstream labs, that whatever they're doing in their research team, they're definitely not just following whatever is the hip and happening way of doing these kind of models nowadays. All right, so what sets this model apart from other models out there? Most models in Gen AI at the moment fall into sort of one or two categories. You've either got sort of language models or you've got vision models. So we've got vision models that are making movies and stuff like that as well. And we've got combined versions of this where you've got a vision encoder, which can basically understand an image and help the language model to be able to interpret that image. Now, this Genus Pro actually goes beyond that that this not only has a vision encoder and a way to be able to understand images and have you do visual question answering over those images, et cetera, but it also has the ability to actually just take text input, tokenize that, and then generate new images out from this. So this is quite a unique thing. You've got both image understanding and being able to answer questions about that. But then you've also got the ability to actually do generative images from this, which are getting on par with some of the early diffusion models that are out there. So in the paper, you can see that they've got some examples of their sort of text to image. So this model is not the first model like this out of DeepSeek. This idea of Janus is actually, this is like their third paper. And I think at least the third model that they've released in relation to this. But you can see with this Janus Pro, they've really upscaled it to make the model much bigger, to make the whole thing work much better. And you can see with the comparisons here that the first one we can see like this, the face of a beautiful girl, the image on the left is from the original Janus model and the image on the right is from the new 7 billion pro model that they've released here. And if you look at each of these images, whether it's like the glass of red wine, etc., each of these is just a better quality image than the smaller model here. All right. So let's talk about how it works. So you've got the two ways of doing this. You've got basically image to tokens and understanding with text tokens out, and you've got text tokens in you know, in and then through the generation phase to images out. So for this understanding encoder, they actually use a Siglip model. So this is a more modern version of the clip model that was made famous by OpenAI. Siglip actually came from Google. It's used in a lot of the things like Pali Gemma and stuff like that, as well as you could imagine a lot of sort of image understanding things that Google has built and released papers on. So that basically does the image to encoding stuff. And then you've basically got your text encoding where that could be asking a question or anything like that. And then they go into an autoregressive model and that autoregressive model is then going to generate tokens out for the text response in the case of the understanding. Now with the generation here, as we can see on the right, you've got this text going in. And then this is basically going into this generative encoder. And this generative encoder then is going through an autoregressive system to be able to predict out the image as it goes through this. Now, this is not something that people would normally do. People normally use diffusion for this kind of thing now, and they maybe have a unit in the diffusion for doing this kind of thing. What they're actually using here is a real sort of throwback because they're using a vector quantization tokenizer in here. Now this vector quantization idea is not a new idea. This has been around for quite a number of years. So the paper that they cite was another paper where people were trying to use autoregressive models to take on diffusion. But this idea goes back even further to things like VQGAN and even before that to the VQVAE model 
which very interestingly, one of the current heads of the Gemini team actually was one of the co-authors of Oriol Vignal's in here. And the idea here was that you get this, rather than have just endless embeddings, you want to get things down to discrete representations. And so a nice way of looking at this was the VQGAN, where you're kind of generating these code books of where you can actually have lookups, and then that allows you to translate to a specific output. And clearly based on some of these papers, this works pretty well in an autoregressive way. Remember the autoregressive way is we're just predicting token after token as it goes through this. So the reason why I bring this up is just to show you that this team is definitely thinking about things in different ways as we see that they're trying to take ideas that are perhaps not that popular in almost all the image models that are out there now. People are not using autoregressive stuff. They're using by far diffusion models for doing this stuff. Even though autoregressive image models is something that people have done for many years in the past. All right. So if we come in and look at the examples that they've got in here, it's able to do very nice text and image sort of descriptions, both in English and in Chinese. So we can see here that it's basically described the scene in detail. It's able to give out a whole sort of a really thorough description of this. We can see that it's able to understand certain texts and stuff like that for doing sorts of OCR tasks, etc. But because it's an autoregressive language model in there as well, it's also able to have good representations which give it more of an understanding than just a surface level thing. So we can see in this question about, can you introduce the background story of the cake? It can sort of work out what this Tom and Jerry is, and then it, it can explain that as it goes through. On the other side, this exact same model can then be used for text to image generation. So that first part, we're using that Siglip encoder for the image to understanding stuff. And now it's flipping to using the sort of code books or the text to image generation with the VQ tokenizer. And you can see that these images come out pretty good. Now they're not super high resolution and they're certainly probably not as good as a lot of the diffusion models that are out there. But the fact that this one model can do both things is really impressive in here. So we can see with this VQ thing, they talk about for visual generation tasks, we use the VQ tokenizer to convert images into discrete IDs. After the ID sequence is flattened into sort of a 1D vector, they use a generation adapter to map those sort of code book embeddings into the input space of the LLM. So this is definitely a unique way of doing this kind of thing and not something that a lot of people have done in the past. All right, let's jump into the code and have a look at getting this model running and doing both the image understanding stuff and some image generation stuff in here. Okay, so getting started in the code, I'm running this in Colab, but I am using an A100 GPU. This won't fit on a T4 GPU. The model's just too big. Uh, and I don't think that the model's just too big. You would need to quantize it, etc., to get it worked there. But if we run this in here, you can see that Okay, we're just bringing in a lot of the standard stuff from Transformers for the auto model for causal LM, but they've also got their own library of the multimodality causal LM and also the chat processor stuff. So to be able to do the Siglip stuff, to be able to do that, they need to have their own processors. And you can see that sure enough, they've got the tokenizer for the text and then the visual chat processor in here. And then they've actually got the model. So downloading the model is roughly, I think, 15 gig or something like that. All right, so I'm going to start off with the image generation rather than the image understanding. So the image generation, you just got a conversation in a standard way, pretty simple compared to like the normal Transformers stuff. So we can see we've got a role, user, content, a stunning ginger mancoon cat. Look at the camera in the style of a Nat Geo portrait. And then the assistant, we're going to prime it, that it's going to respond, but we're not actually doing it. It's going to respond itself. And that response is actually going to be in the form of an image that comes out of this. So for basically doing this, you're setting this up. This is actually going to go through and generate 16 different images as you're going through this and then just save them. And you see that finally we end up with this generate function that we're passing in the actual model the actual processor, which is consisting, I think, of the, the text 
tokenizer and the image processor in there, and then the prompt. And so sure enough, if we plot out the images we got back, we got 16 ginger mancoon cats out there that are just slightly different for each of these. And then once you've got this set up, you can do for a whole bunch of different things. Okay, now I can ask it, okay, give me a picture of Donald Trump as the new Roman emperor of the United States in an anime style. And you can see, sure enough, it can do, because it's not censored like a lot of the big models out there, it certainly understands what Donald Trump is. It can come up with a representation of that. It can certainly draw him in an anime way. You can see that even can sort of get the Roman elements and the United States elements both in the picture. Even though it, that it's using not a diffusion sort of system, it's able to put together these kind of ideas quite well out there. You can certainly generate lots of cartoons with this, lots of anime with this. It's not censored, so you can be careful, use at your own risk, etc. All right, for the image understanding, we're doing the inverse of what we were doing. So now really is where we want the siglip part as opposed to the sort of VQ tokenizer going on here. And so you'll see that we've got this processor and we've got the tokenizer again, and then we've got our model. We're just loading up the same model. So I didn't need to download any more weight because it's the same model as what we had before. And then now in the conversation, we just need to give it the link to an image, right? So we're going to pass in the user, we're going to pass in content, we're going to pass in images. That will basically load that up and process that and then pass that into the image. So you can see here's the image that I chose to do. So this is taken from Unsplash if you want to use the image just to give the, the photographer credit. Beautiful image in there. So that's just loading the image that we can see. And you can see up here, I basically said, what is this place? Tell me its history. And the model answered back going through this, right? So it's got a, a system prompt for this. You're a helpful language and vision assistant. You're able to understand visual content that the user provides and assist the user with a variety of different tasks using natural language. Okay, what is this place? Tell me its history. The image shows Mount Fuji, which is correct, right? A prominent and iconic mountain in Japan. Mount Fuji is known for its symmetrical, and it goes into a whole bunch of different stuff around that. And then because it gives me the history, it actually is able to give me history because I asked for that. Mount Fuji has a rich history going back 100 million years. And it's got a whole bunch of different things like in the Edo period, all this sort of stuff in here that it wouldn't have necessarily come out with if I just asked it, what is this? And you could imagine that uh, I could even ask, okay, what's the, the town in there? What's flying in there? I didn't try that for this, but you could certainly try that as well. So this shows you basically how to use the model for doing both image understanding stuff as well as image generation stuff. And it is quite unique that this model can actually do both of these. It is interesting to sort of see, okay, are we going to see a merger at some point of a lot of the more modern models? Now, I don't know if this would work with diffusion and diffusion is certainly the most popular image generation technique that's out there now. It is possible that they could modify it for that. I do find it very interesting that they've chosen not to do that. They've chosen to go with this sort of auto regressive way of doing things. But anyway, the collab is here. You'll need access to an A100 to be able to run it. But if you've got access to that, have a play with it, or you can download it on your local computer and run it there. Again, you're probably going to need a pretty decent GPU to be able to run it. I think if you've got 24 gig of VRAM, you might be able to fit it in, but it's certainly not going to fit into the T4 in this state. Anyway, interesting model, definitely from an interesting organization that's out there putting stuff out, sharing it with people so people can see how it's done, can see what the quality is, that kind of thing. As always, if you've got any questions, etc., please put them you know, in the comments below or any comments. I'd love to hear people, what people think of this, what people found, what sort of images you're able to generate with this that perhaps don't work with other image generation services, etc. And as always, if you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.